So I have shared this Microsoft whiteboard. Uh, is it visible to you? Yes, sir, it's visible, sir, now. OK. So let us start. What was uh, my, my last topic? I was discussing about uh, the operations uh, on signals, na? manipulations of discrete time signals. And I told you that, am I audible? Please. So I, I, I was discussing about transformation on. Transform, transformation on um, the. Transform sir, are you writing something on the board, sir? Yeah, I am writing. So it's not visible, sir. I was telling, I was asking that, that whether it is visible or not. Sir, board is, whiteboard is visible, but what you're writing is not. Why? But here this board is visible in this way. Why it is like that? I don't know. Okay, let me select this. Now it is visible, now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's visible, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Transformation, uh, transformation of independent variable. Transformation of independent variables variable so i i was discuss uh, about, uh, on this particular topic and i uh, told that if a signal is given suppose xn is the signal and its independent variable means this argument n which is integer variable in case of discrete time signal and this uh, you can transform this variable n by uh, writing like this in place of n, you can write n plus k or n minus k, x n minus k. You can write this, where k is another integer. Okay. So suppose, for example, if k is equal to two, then x n plus k implies the shifting of the signal to the right. Uh, so suppose here you write uh, k is equal to two, then it indicates that this signal has been shifted in the left hand side of the vertical axis uh vertical axis and the amount of shifting is two samples okay the two sample shifting similarly x n minus 2 will be the this this will represent uh, that this x n has been shifted at the right hand side of the vertical axis and the amount of shifting is two sample two samples okay so this is uh, this transformation is called shifting transformation shifting. OK, now another I told you that if I have a signal Xn, you can draw the signal Xn and you can think another signal that is X A into N. In general, A is real number. OK, but if you take A is greater than one, suppose, and A is integer. For example, if you think that A is equal to 2, then the new signal will be X2N. So if you know Xn, then it is possible to find out the shape of Xn. And you will see that if Xn has just, most probably I have already uh, shown this uh, a, a arbitrary graph of some Xn and the derived X2N from this Xn. I have shown and there I have shown that number of samples for this X to N is decreasing. It is becoming half of this number of sample of this XN. OK, and the signal X to N is also compressed since the number of samples are decreasing. Therefore, you, th you can think that this is a compressed version of this action. 
and at the same time this is called down sampling so if you see that a is greater than 1 for example a is equal to 2 okay then it is called down sampling by a factor 2 this is called down sampling down sampling okay another name is there which is called actually decimation decimation of the discrete time signal a down down sampling is the more more popular term so down sampling down sampling means actually uh, you are reducing the number of samples so by multiplying x uh, uh, by by multiplying 2 with this independent variable n or 3 with this independent variable n you can down sample the signal by factor 2 or by factor 3 in general but when a is less than 1 for example a is less than 1 our signal is xan and here i am thinking that original signal suppose this xn and the transform signal is xan and let us consider a is less than 1 for example a is equal to 0.5 or 0.5 or actually half i want to say okay suppose a is equal to half then actually uh, new signal is xn plus n by 2 this will create half sampling half sampling means it will increase the number of samples okay if no value is there then you will put zero there so in between samples you will get some zeros let us consider one signal then it will be clear to you suppose one signal is like this this is your xn this is one sample value this is another sample value this is another sample value okay this is another sample value this is another sample value and this is another sample suppose this is n so how many samples are there i have six samples okay this is for n is equal to 0 this is for n is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 5 so we have six samples okay for this signal xn now if you want to find out the new uh, transform signal here this is n and suppose this is your x2 uh, n by 2 i am writing n by 2 here x n by 2 then what will be the shape of the signal for n is equal to 0 start from this n is equal to 0 x n by 2 is equal to actually x0 now you know what is the value of x0 for example this x0 is this value so here you will get at n is equal to 0 you will get this sample here this sample you will get here so this sample is this sample now next you uh, just uh, take n is equal to 1 because n is integer okay you cannot take n is equal to 0.5 so n is integer so you take n is equal to 1 when you are taking n is equal to 1 then x n by 2 is becoming x half so there is no value of x half because you know what is the value of x0 x0 is this one and you know what is the value of x1 x1 is this one this value is x1 this okay therefore uh, since this value is not there so at n is equal to 1 this value will be zero so here this value will be zero just i will put mark here so next you if you consider n is equal to suppose n is equal to 2 then x n by 2 is becoming x1 so you know what is the value of x1 this 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 one is the value of x1 so at n is equal to 2 at n is equal to 2 the this value will appear, appear here so just i am just to indicating this equal to this i am putting the same sign here also so this value is equal to this value then you uh, go to this value n is equal to 3 
and then in this case it will be n is equal to 3 but 3 by 2 means actually actually x uh, 1.5 you know x0 is there x1 is there x2 is there but x1.5 is not there because n is integer therefore again at this point n is equal to 3 you will get 0 now for n is equal to 4 if you put 4 here n is equal to 4 then x n by 2 this will be equal to x2 now you know what is the value of x2 x2 is this one x2 is this one so here at n is equal to 4 this sample value will appear here this sample value and i am just putting this mark to indicate that this sample and this sample so again next sample value will be zero and then this sample will appear here this one for example this and this two samples are same then again zero then again you will get this sample value this sample value here and then again zero then again you will get this sample value here Now, this is your xn by 2. Now, for this, you see how many samples are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, 11 samples we are getting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Na? 11 samples we are getting. You can put one more zero here, no problem. But 11 you see okay here you see this uh, signal has been spread out okay and the width of this range is has been increased and number of samples though these sample values are zeros but they are actually uh, inputted in between two samples here in between two samples like this Therefore, the total number of samples from starting from first sample to last sample, you are introducing some zeros here and the number of samples are increasing. Therefore, this is called up sampling. Okay. This is called up sampling technique. So these are the two operations. Okay. On independent variable. Now, uh, on dependent variable, some dependent variable actually means what you can do. Uh, suppose some signal is there, xn. Okay. Dependent variable is xn. So what you can do, you can add some constant term to xn to get the new signal. For example, you can generate a new signal, for example, x1n by adding some constant term a with xn. Or you can subtract uh, some constant from the signal also. For example, you can do like this. So here you can uh, subtract some constant A from Xn. Then you will get new signal. And since you are operating on the independent variable, means either you are adding uh, the value to the magnitude of the signal. Therefore, either the signal value, uh, the, each sample value will either increase or decrease. But uh, the time domain is not changing. Time domain means the signal will not be spread out or compressed due to this. And sometimes you can multiply some, suppose here, uh, uh, some constant with Xn. Okay? So these are the three basic things you can do. And, uh, other operations are also possible. For example, if I have two signals, for example, two sequence sequence of signals, x1n, x2n, sometimes this, this discrete time signals are uh, called discrete sequence. Okay. So you can add two signals, x1n and x2n, to generate a new signal action. Okay. You can subtract one signal from another other signal also. That means you can 
write uh, xn, a new signal is like this, x1n minus x2n, or vice versa, means x2n minus x1n. You can do this also. You can multiply two, multiply two sequences like this. Uh, this is called actually sample by sample multiplication. Okay, sample by sample. It is not uh, vector multiplication. It is sample by sample, element by element multiplication. All these things are element by element. Addition is element by element. Subtraction is also element by element. And this multiplication is also element by element, x to n. Okay, so you can, you can perform this operation also. Okay. So, uh, we have discussed folding operation, time delay operation, time delay means shifting operation, folding operation, time scaling operations. And this is amplitude scaling. Amplitude scaling means you are multiplying this uh, some sequence with some uh, means constant term A, then actually the amplitude of the signal or, uh, or sequences is, in, uh, sequence is increasing or changing. If A is greater than one, then the each and every value uh, of um, the sequence will uh, enlarged or magnified. Or if A is less than one, then the the magnitude of the signal will be yeah, decreased, okay, or diminished. So the new signal X1N will be the scaled version of XN, okay. Now, next I want to discuss about uh, discrete time systems. Okay. Just I, I want to represent the system, discrete time system in block form first. Then I will uh, say how it is possible to design some discrete time system. Okay. Suppose this is one black box. I, I, I don't know. What is the internal, what are the internal elements of this system? Uh, just I am writing, this is a discrete time system. Sometimes it is called DTS. Okay. Now, in discrete time system, one or more inputs may be there. Okay. For understanding, I will think about one uh, one input only. One input means I I will supply some input sequence through this input side uh, through this input terminal, and it may have several outputs also. But for our clearance, I will uh, consider that only one output is there. And obviously, if you give some input, some sequence XN at the input side of this discrete time system, then you will get some output YN at the output of the discrete time system. And in general, we write that YN is transformation. I am writing this transformation on XN. Okay, I, I will write in this way. Or some in some books, you can get this, this form. It is some response to XN. So output to yn is response to xn. So any any uh, method you can use for representing the output of a discrete time system if the signal input signal xn is given. Okay. Now here for example I have an input sequence. I am I, I am supplying some input sequence like this. Suppose this is the sequence I have given to the input. Okay, this is Xn. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 sample values I am. Just passing through the input of the discrete time system. Then obviously output I will get uh, the output output will generate the same system uh, same number of samples. Okay, so in the output I will get, for example,
this four samples. Okay. They will be equally. They should be equally spaced. Suppose this is. This is your y n. Okay. This is your y n. And what you are doing actually in the discrete time system, the signal is processed here inside this discrete time system. Then it will uh, responding. Okay. Then it, 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 it will respond. Okay. It is responding as y n. Now, this is the basic block diagram of discrete time system. Now I can actually what I want to say that for a discrete time system, the input output relation should be explicitly defined. Okay. For example, input output relationship means actually what is the relationship between yn and xn? It should be properly defined if I want to define some discrete time system. Okay, the signal xn will be given to us. And if the input output relationship of this particular uh, discrete time system is defined properly, then automatically we can apply some method to find out the values of yn. For example, let us take one signal like this xn is equal to suppose mod n, sorry, mod n minus 3 less than equal to n less than, uh, for example, less, less than equal to 3. And this is equal to 0 otherwise. Can you tell me how many sample values are there for this signal which are non zeros? six samples and one sample is there within this uh, signal that is zero but outside this range we are thinking all all the sample values are zero and if you draw the signal from this definition i can draw in this way modern means actually when n is equal to zero you will get the zero value so this is the value and when n is equal to suppose one so when n is equal to 1, that, that means actually n greater than 0, therefore xn will be 1. So next value will be 1 at this value, suppose 1. Okay. And then for n is equal to 2, the next value will be 2. For n is equal to 3, the next value will be 3. Okay. This is right hand side. And when n is equal to minus 1, then xn is equal to 1. So here, you will get this signal, this 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 sample, because mod n. Okay, and for n is equal to minus two, this is for minus one. This is for minus two. Minus two, the value will be again two. Means this sample value and this sample value will be equal. This will be equal to this, and then for n is equal to three, the sample value will be like this. So this is our xn. Suppose this is our xn. An horizontal axis is representing n, sorry, n. Okay. Now, uh, I want to describe some input output relationship where this xn is defined. Suppose, let us consider one system like this. Uh, if the system input output relationship is yn is equal to xn, then what kind of name I can give for this particular system, discrete time system? Identical. Means whatever xn you are putting, at the output you will get the same input. Okay? So, if a system, discrete time system, where input-output relationship is given in this way, then whatever input, input signal, input sequence you are giving here at the input side of this discrete time system, uh, the same thing will appear at the output. Then only you can write, this xn is equal to yn is equal to xn. This is identical system. So whatever uh, then so in that case actually 
this xn this is the shape of xn and the shape of yn will also be same that is the same thing will be yn okay but if i define the input output relationship in different way for example for example uh yn is equal to xn minus 1. This is one input output relationship. You know what is xn and this system here at the input of the system you are applying xn and at the output you are getting yn which is nothing but xn minus 1. That means actually this discrete time system is providing one sample delay. Now, one sample delay means it is possible for you to draw this uh, new waveform. Can you draw the new waveform? It is very easy. Just this sample value will appear. This here actually one sample delay in the right hand side of the end because n minus one is there, minus sign is there. Therefore, this signal will be shifted here in in the right hand side. So this sample value will appear here. This sample value will appear here. This sample value will be appear here. This sample value, this zero will appear here. So this will come here. This will come here. This will come here. And this sample value will appear here. OK. And here there will be no signal. So whole thing will be shifted. OK. Whole thing will be shifted. This is one sample delay. Similarly, if y is equal to x n plus 1, then one sample advance means all this thing will be shifted here in the right, left hand side. So this sample, this sample value will come here at this at this position. This sample value will come here at this position. This sample value will come here at this position. The zero, this this sample value will come here. This sample value will come here. This sample value will come here. This sample value, this sample value will come here. That means whole thing will be shifted to the left hand side of the vertical axis with respect to the vertical axis. So this will be the shape of the signal. The shape will be almost same. The, the shape will be same, but but there, there will be some delay either at the right hand side of the uh, vertical axis or towards the left hand side of the vertical axis. OK, so. When this uh, it will be n plus one, then it will be shifted to the left hand side. OK. Now. This is called actually unit advance system another so uh, does that mean so does that mean in a discrete time system like the shape like the overall shape of the signal has to remain same otherwise uh, everything else is fine no for these two systems if you if input output relationship is given here in this form x n minus 1 or y n is equal to x n plus sorry or y n is equal to x n plus 1 for these two systems or you can generally in general you can write for x n plus k or x n minus k for this kind of input output relationship the input signal will be just shifting shifting it will shift it will shift either toward right hand side or toward left hand side based on the plus sign is there or minus sign is there it will be shifted to the right hand side if minus sign is there it will be shifted to the left hand side if plus sign is there and how many samples it will be shifted that is dependent on the value of k if k is equal to one then one uh, one sample shifting will be there and if k is equal to two for example then this sample value will appear at this position at this position and this sample will appear at this position if it is shifted in the left hand side for example k is equal to two for this case for x uh, n plus two so in that case so for these two cases, actually, the shape of the signal or the sample values will be same and just the sample values will be shifted either to a right hand, right hand side or towards left hand side with respect to the vertical axis for these two cases only, not for other cases. For other, for other definitions, the sample values will change. For this case, sample values are not changing, but just sample values are changing their position only. OK, so whole, whole signal is shipped into a right, right hand side or left hand side with respect to the vertical axis for this kind of shifting, shifting operation. 
and this is called actually case sample delay. This is called case sample advance system. Okay. Now, for other system, I am giving another example of another another system here. Suppose one discrete time system is like this, where input output relationship is given like this: one by three x n minus one plus x n plus x n minus. Uh, so, for example, x n plus one. This is the input output relation system. This is a actually three window averaging system. You are taking three sample values and you are doing the average averaging. For this case, it is possible to find out the value of y for n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, like that. Okay, for example, if you want to find out y0, for example, n is equal to 0. N is equal to zero, and you want to find out the sample value of the output signal at n is equal to zero. So in that case, actually, the signal will be like this: x of minus one plus x zero plus x of one. Uh, sorry, this will be one by three. Okay. This is the this is the value of y zero because at at uh, where n is zero so for all the places of n you are just you are putting zeros here you see you can here zero here n is equal to zero here n is equal to zero here n is equal to zero okay so so here what is what, what will be the value of this y zero then you know what is x n x zero x zero value is zero at this position the value is zero and x one is this x one is equal to one and x of minus one is equal to one that means you are taking these three samples, one, this one, and this zero, and then you are dividing this by two. So y is zero is equal to two by three. So if you draw y, if you draw y n, then here suppose this is your y n. So at n is equal to zero, you are getting some two by three sample, this value. You see, for this particular system, though at n is equal to zero, though the input signal is zero, but at the output you are getting two by three value. So this value is two by three. Similarly, you can find out the value of y one. You put y n is equal to one. So in that case, this this will be this will be zero. Means one minus one means it will be zero, and it will be x n n is equal to one. So at this position, what to write here? You have to write one, and at this position, what to write? N is equal to two because n is equal to you have considered n is equal to one. So one plus one is equal to two. Okay. And in this case, what is the value? Uh, what should be the value of y one? It can be e. so. You just you see what is the value of x zero? It is one a uh, zero. X zero is equal to zero here. And what is the value of x1? Means you are taking x1, so one value. What is the value of x2? x2 means this sample value. So what you are doing, just you are taking these three samples, this sample, this sample, and this zero. So this sample value is two, this sample value is one, and this sample value is zero. So zero plus one plus two means three divided by three means y1 is equal to one. So at n is equal to one, you will get y1 and it will be the value will be one and so you can draw this value here huh? in this way you can continue for n is equal to for other values of n okay for n is equal to two you can find out y2 for n is equal to three you can find y3 for n is equal to minus one you can find y of minus one for n is equal to minus two you can find y of minus two so and so and after uh, calculating all this value you just uh, put uh, the values of y n at different positions here. Okay, you will get some value here, some value here, some value here. So you will see that in this case, the shape of y n is not exact form of this shape of x n. The, the, they have different shapes. Okay, have you got my point? So what will be the shape of the output that is dependent on the input output relationship? So this is one averaging system, okay? Time over, na? 
time is over please yes sir okay then uh, do you have the next class on there is no class yes sir actually you have a class sir uh, what for okay, 30 okay okay then uh, let me leave them just uh, okay okay let me leave but your attendance is very poor only few number of students have attended okay 1076 okay okay let us leave thank you sir